X's and O's on the KFAN Minnesota Vikings radio network is underway and Mike Zimmer head coach of the Vikings joins us into a home game against the Atlanta Falcons back to last Sunday for a second century link with no fans. I mean, how, how weird was it? Yeah, it was pretty weird. Uh, you know, there's we were able to hard count them <laughs> on the road, which, you know, would never happen uh, uh, there. So uh, but, uh, you know, once you get into the game, it's 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 kind of business as usual. Now, did the rain and or mist impact or uh, mess with your shield at all? Yeah, it was it was uh, it was a tough day with that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I, I, well, I didn't realize there really was a problem. I was just trying to mess around. So, I mean, you got like 17 on the play clock. Shield gets all foggy and everything. What do you do? Yeah, I actually um, took it off to be, start the game, put it back on, and took it back off and said, uh, let's just wear, <laughs> wear the mask. I, I think post head coaching career outside of your uh, ever developing horse racing career, there could be a business opportunity here for like shield cleaners for for coaches. You can make a little bit of money. Yeah, I can try that. Might make some if the pandemic doesn't go away, I might make some shields. <laughs> Not a bad idea. Shields at, uh, well, whatever. Um, now, from afar, it, um, it, it seemed the most fired up and, and, and excited that we've seen the sideline this season during that game. Did, did you feel that? I think we had good energy throughout the course of the ball game. Um, you know, there was, there was a lot of good things that happened in the game. We, uh, we just weren't able to finish. Now, here come the Atlanta Falcons, new coach, Matt Ryan, so probably a new vibe. I mean, I'd, I'd expect you're going to get a big shot from these Falcons, right? Yeah, they'll, they'll, uh, they'll give their best shot. Yeah, usually that's how it goes after, after you lose a coach. When, uh, when, when it comes to somebody like Julio Jones dealing with what he's dealing with, didn't play last game, at this stage of the week, like, how do you plan for him or is it planning for scheme? No, you have to plan for him as well. Uh, you have to prepare like he's going to play. And then, uh, you know, they got Ridley on the other side. And this, this kid is really, really good. I mean, he's explosive in and out of the cuts. And then, you know, you put Julio, who's got great size and speed and catches the ball well. Uh, they've got uh, uh, outstanding receivers. Now, now Atlanta's 0-5 season, outside of uh, maybe some obvious things that people follow, like, like what's their season been like? What has led to that 0-5? Well, they had a like a 14 or 16 point lead against Dallas in the fourth quarter and lost. Uh, Dallas got an onside kick. They had a 10 point lead against um, somebody else uh, with 10 minutes left in the fourth quarter and got beat. So they've been up in a lot of the ball games. They scored a lot of points in all the games. Um, so it'll it'll be a you know they take a lot of shots down the field and and defensively they play very very hard. They've uh, you know they've got a great inside rusher and and um, you know uh, Keanu Neal is a really good uh, uh, safety. So uh, it'll it'll be a really good game. Yeah, that uh, that defensive tackle you're referencing, Grady Jarrett. I mean he's a handful. Is he still as good as he was like within the last couple of years? Yeah, he's terrific. Very quick. Very powerful. Uh, one of the top three techniques in the league. And, and, you know, in a season 2020 where you get asked every week about high scores and stuff like that, there are just so many different things this year with no preseason and that virtual offseason than we've ever seen. And, for instance, Atlanta's 0-5 and, and plus one in the take give. I mean, that, that's unbelievable. Yeah, that really is. Uh, they've, been, they've been doing a good job of getting, uh, getting the football and not giving it away much. So if I tell you into that Sunday game in Seattle, you're going to run for 200 and they're going to go for seven on third down, you're going to win, right? You would hope. <laughs> I mean, it's just, it's again, just another crazy facet of the 2020 X's and O's. Mike Zimmer, head coach of the Minnesota Vikings. Now, you guys are one and four, and that's what matters most to you overall. But what, where are you seeing legitimate improvement with all facets of the team that maybe is not super obvious? Well, I think the biggest thing, Paul, is in the last few ball games, we're starting to get an identity of who we are. Um, you know, we're we seem to be running the football much better. Um, you know, we're we're hitting some big plays on the play actions offensively. Um, defensively, we continue to get better each and every week. Um, we've we've you know we've gone through with each play wins and losses, and each game we 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 tend to get a little bit better. Um, you know. 
obviously third downs have been good defensively and, and, and both sides of the ball we've been pretty good in the red zone. So we're just going to continue to keep trying to get a little bit better each week. Um, you know, as we were watching our Atlanta game from last year and uh, we had um, seven new defensive starters at this point. And that's not including guys like Stephen Weatherly and and uh, Ben Gideon and all the guys that were missing, I, you know, on the curse and Mackenzie Alexander and, you know, so on and so forth, uh, Sandejo, hmm. uh, whatever. So, you know, you're talking, we're talking like there's 14 guys that have never been here that haven't had OTAs, haven't had, uh, you know, really much training camp. So uh, they're starting to get a little bit better, though, each each and every week. <clears throat> See, that road you went down where you were mentioning all the players who were here last year compared to, like, who's here now, you know, I, I, I know you don't blame stuff on that because you, you, you may think it's a loser's lament going into that one and four, but, I mean, it, it is reality, specifically with that offseason where – you and other teams probably you have to be patient you know with 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 these new players getting better week by week right but it's tough yeah and paul you think about this we've lost we've played uh three undefeated teams we've played another team that's lost one game out of the five games we've lost two uh undefeated teams by one point uh, at the end of the ball game, so uh, we just keep getting better, and and I see this thing turn around pretty quick. What uh, what do you think of linebacker Eric Wilson so far? I mean, bars out for the season. Eric, he just he, he you can tell from afar he cares so much, and he's flying all over the place, doing the best he can. Yeah, no, Eric's done a good job. Uh, you know, he had he had a lot of productivity the other night. Um, you know, there was a couple of poor plays in there as well, but. You know, I think he can, continues to be more familiar, uh, you know, like all these guys are with, with how, how things are working out and uh, his role that he has to play now. Um, you know, it's, he, he filled in for uh, Gideon last year when he got hurt. And so, you know, it's a different position for him, but a lot of the similarities with this, as far as job description. Coach, when, when running back Alexander Madison didn't get it on that fourth and two feet, like after the game, flight home, whatever, Monday, did you have to pick his spirits up a little bit? No, I, he, he's a good back, and, you know, I don't question backs. Uh, you know, they, you know, he probably should have bounced the ball, but at the end of the day, those guys are the ones out there making decisions. He had some great runs in the ball game. Um, you know, unfortunately, we didn't get that one, and, um, you know, that's, that's part of life. And, and with Alexander, in my opinion, a fantastic back, excellent compliment for Dalvin. What, what is smoother with his game year two compared to last year? Well, I think just everything as far as the uh, understanding, you know, the biggest thing for these guys is concepts in, in the passing game, whether it be routes or whether it be um, protections. And so I think he just has a much better feel for all those things. He's he's able to see the different exotic blitzes and, and pick up those guys uh, extremely well. This is our last chat for a couple of weeks. I know that greatly saddens you. Um, will, will you be able to get some rest during during the bye week or, or is it all like tear down the first six games and make it better? Well, we're definitely going to have to look at, at, at everything that we've done, kind of big self-scout there for a while. Um, you know, where, where we were at week one to where we are at week six, take a look at those, see. And again, look at, you know, now our personnel is different in a lot of, a lot of different ways. So, okay, how are we adapting to these personnel and, and where do we go from there? And then, um, you know, so we'll try and get some of that. You know, obviously we all got to get a little bit of rest. The players need to get some some time off and get away from from myself and the rest of the coaches. Um, so, uh, but uh, and then get ready to come back. You know, um, I got a text today that uh, when I was in Dallas in 1995. Uh, Barry Switzer went for fourth and one in Philadelphia and didn't get it. We ended up winning the Super Bowl. Oh, holy cow! See, and and I think. The Vikings in 99 might have started like two and four, finished 10 and six, ended up going to the postseason. Time for two more. Uh, the, um, the way these guys are fighting for you from the Tennessee game on all season, but specifically those three, it is are you sensing that the identity of like this group is, is defining itself. You talked about identity. Offense is really good. Defense is getting better game by game. But this individual group, what do you think? Yeah, I think they're starting to get a lot better feel for one another. Uh, you know, the, <laughs> we've got a lot of young guys playing uh, right now, and for them to feel comfortable around a, you know, around a bunch of veterans, not having uh, virtual 
uh, only having virtual, uh, I think they're starting to get a better feel for it. And I think the veterans are starting to push these guys a little bit harder now, um, which they need to do. And um, I think it's starting to show. Now these Falcons rolled the dice in the offseason with Todd Gurley, and, and he's making all the games. Seems like it's working okay. Why? It seems like they throw 70% of the time and run like 30. I mean, uh, they, it's just they have an imbalance there. Have you noticed that? Yeah, but they run the ball very, very effectively. Uh, you know, they'll run the ball on third down. They'll run the ball on first and second down with some of their things. Their offensive line has five first-round draft picks uh, that start for them that uh, can be physical downhill players as well as the, the wide zones that, uh, that they're similar to our offense. Hey, Coach, best of luck. Uh, thanks for the time, and uh, enjoy the off week, okay? Okay, Paul, thank you.